Today's topic is binary search trees. Hey everybody, welcome back. I recently did a video on trees and binary trees, and today I wanted to turn our binary tree into a binary search tree. So if you missed that last video on trees or have no idea what trees are or just need a refresher, you might wanna check that previous video out. I put a link down in the description. Also, as always, source code is available through Patreon. To all of you wonderful people who support this channel, you're the best, thank you. But now onto trees. So in our last video, we ended up producing a simple binary tree. A binary tree is just a tree where each node has up to two children or subtrees. Typically, we refer to those as a left child and a right child. And I also showed you some simple code for how to traverse that tree and print out the nodes. We also talked about how trees are useful for representing hierarchical data. Pretty much any time you have data that has a one-to-many relationship, a tree might be a good data structure to use. And in the previous video, I also mentioned that trees can be used to speed up data access. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Because a binary search tree is just a binary tree like this, but it has a few particularly useful properties. So for today's example, I'm going to store numbers in my tree just like this, but search trees can be used with any data type that can be ordered, meaning that your elements can be greater than, less than, or equal to each other. So of course that's gonna work with ints, doubles, floats, but we could also do it with strings using string compare, or we could have objects that have dates and we could sort by dates. Pretty much anything that you can sort, you can use in a binary search tree. Now the main thing we're gonna to add to our tree today is order, we're going to enforce some order. Specifically, if we're looking here at the root or really any node in the tree, all the numbers to the left are going to be less than the numbers stored in the node and all the numbers to the right are going to be greater than that node. So in this example, the root is 15 and everything to the left is less than 15 and everything to the right is greater than 15. And that continues with each of the subtrees. When we get down to 19, everything to the left is less than 19 and everything to the right is greater. Now, why is this helpful? Now, imagine that all of these numbers were held in a list, like a linked list or an array, pretty much some kind of sequential list. And say we wanted to see if a particular number was inside this list. We just wanted to test to see if we had that number. Well, how long is it gonna take? In the best case, it could be the first one we check, first one in the list, but it could also be the last one in the list, and I could have to search through the entire list to find what I'm looking for. Searching in this case would be an order n operation, meaning that we have to check up to n different nodes where n is the number of nodes in our list. Now, on the other hand, with a binary search tree, if we have a nice bushy tree like this, searching goes a little differently. Say you wanna to check to see if 16 is in the tree. Well, we check the root, that's not it. We know if 16 is in our tree, then it's on the right side since it's larger than 15. So we check the right child, 16 is less than 19, so we're going to keep looking, but this time we're going to look to the left because we know that we want something less than 19. And then we find it. As long as our tree is bushy, more precisely, we can call this a balanced tree. So as long as our tree is balanced, we're only going to have to check about log n different nodes to find the one we're looking for. And especially as n gets large, log n is gonna be much smaller than n, and so things are going to be a lot faster. Now let's look at how this works in code. So we're gonna start with this code. This is just the binary tree example code we used last time. It basically just had a function for creating tree nodes. So we see that right here. We also had a struct that defined what our tree nodes look like. And then we had some functions down here that basically helped us print out the contents of our tree. We're not gonna do much with those. We will keep them around. We'll print out our tree at some point. And then down here in main, we just added some nodes and printed out the tree. Now today I wanna add two new functions to my tree. One that inserts node into the tree in order of course, so that we have a binary search tree. And we're gonna have a second function that uses that ordering to search the tree. Okay, so let's start with insert. Now, first off, I'm going to return a Boolean value. That's gonna simply tell us whether the node was inserted or not. We may not need that for this example, but it's a useful thing to add. So I'm just gonna add it. And then we're gonna take two arguments. The first is going to be a pointer to a pointer of type tree node. And the second is the value that I want to insert. And of course you can see bool isn't working for us. So let's run up here and include standard bool.h. That should take care of that. Now, please don't panic about the double pointer. It's simply there because if the tree root is null, I need to be able to change the address that the root pointer points to. So with a single pointer, I wouldn't be able to do that. But just for convenience, let's go ahead and create a single pointer here 
and we'll have it point to whatever root pointer points to. So we can use that, that'll be a little more convenient and maybe make some of the syntax a little less scary for those of you that are still maybe a little bit uncomfortable with pointers. Now we talked about before in my last video about the fact that trees lend themselves to recursive processing and this function is going to be recursive. It doesn't have to be, but I'm choosing to make it recursive. So first of all, we're gonna handle two basis cases. One is if our root is null. So this is the first case we're gonna look at. Now, if the root is null, that means the tree is empty. So what we're gonna do here is simply set our root pointer to a new node. We'll call create node with the value. This is just the function we had before, so I'm passing in the value, and then we're going to assign that root pointer to be the value. So I'm basically creating a new root for the tree and setting it. Okay, so if that's the case, then I can return true, and we are done. Okay, our second base case is going to be when our value is equal to the root's value. So this is the one where we say the thing you're trying to add is actually already here in this root. And here we've got some decisions to make. In this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do nothing. I'm just gonna say, it's already in my tree. I'm not gonna add it a second time. So I'm only going to allow a value to exist once in my tree. So we're gonna return false because we didn't add it to the tree. So those are my two base cases. And now we're gonna add two recursive cases. And these are almost identical. You can probably guess what I'm gonna do here. Basically, I'm gonna say if value is less than the roots value. Okay, so if it's less than, oh, whoops. If it's less than the root value, then what we wanna do is we're gonna look in the left side of the tree. So what we're gonna do is we're going to try to insert we're gonna basically recursively call our function and we're going to pass in the address of the roots left. Okay, so this is gonna pass in the, again, a double pointer so that we can change its value and we'll pass in the value, okay? And then our other recursive case is basically the other option, which is that the value is greater than the root. And so we're gonna do the same thing down here, except we're going to check the right side. Okay, so what this is gonna do is it's going to recursively work through the tree. It's gonna basically pick a side and it'll go that side. And then when it finally finds a spot that's null, it will basically create a new node using this base case right here. And that's really it. This is going to work. It's gonna handle all of our cases. So now let's look at our second function, which is how do we find a number? So this one is also going to return a bool that's gonna tell us whether it found the number or not. We're going to again pass in a pointer to our root and the value we're going to pass in. Note that this time we didn't pass in a double pointer. That's because we're not changing the tree at all. All we're doing is searching for it. We're just going to be looking through the tree. And so a single pointer is gonna work just fine. So once again, let's look at our base cases. We're gonna check first to see if the root is null. Okay, in this case, we can just return false. This basically just means our tree is empty. There's nothing to search. There's nothing to find. We just, it's not here. The next base case is if our roots value is equal to the value we're looking for, then we're gonna return true, right? Because then we found it, obviously it's right here. So then we're basically going to mirror what we did previously, except we're not inserting, we're finding, but we're going to say if the value is less than the roots value, then what we're gonna do is return find number of the left child and pass in value. And this is basically going to then search, again recursively, in the left side of this tree. And we will do the exact same thing on the right side of the tree. Okay, again, this looks very similar to up above, except we're just searching. We're not actually inserting or changing the tree at all. And again, that's all we have to do. This function will just keep recursing until either we find the node with a matching value or a null node. And in that case, we know we were not successful. Okay, so just to test things out, let's jump down here into main. And I'm not gonna create all of these again. This was a little manual. Instead, let's just make a root. We'll start out empty. Just remove this. We'll leave our tree down here to print out our tree once we're done. But then all I'm gonna do is call insert number and we'll pass in the address of root. And let's just make the tree that I used in the diagram before. Let's add 15 and then 11 and then 24. 
and then 5, 16, and 19. Actually, I think 19, 16, I don't remember. Anyway, it's fine. It may not be exactly the same tree, that's fine. But the point is here, we're just gonna keep inserting things and that is great. So then let's run down here. Let's compile our example, that looks fine. And let's run it. And you can see that we basically constructed the tree. It looks a little different from the diagram, but you can see that we have the lesser values on the left side of the root, which is 15. And on the right side, we have the values that are greater than 15. It's fairly balanced. It's definitely going to allow us to search fairly quickly. Okay, so that works. Now let's also go in here and search for a few numbers just so that we can see if we can find them. Here, we're gonna print out a couple of numbers. We'll print out the number we're searching for and let's just print out whether we found it or not. And so let's search for 16, my number root 16. And let's search for, we'll do 16 and 15 and five. Those are all numbers that are in our tree. And then let's search for 115. One and seven, so these are all not in our tree. Okay, so this will just give us a good idea of whether our find number function is actually working. So we compile it and let's run it. And so you can see, yeah, of course we printed out the tree, that's fine, I won't look at that. But you can see that yes, the ones that are in the tree, we found them. The ones that are not in the tree, we did not find them. So our binary search tree is working. Okay, and this is gonna provide much faster searching than we would get from putting these numbers in a list. But I wanna emphasize that this is not guaranteed to be the case. So consider what would happen here if I inserted my nodes in already sorted order, instead of just randomly like I did. Now you would get a tree that looks like this, which is basically just a linked list. It ha I mean, it's it could be a tree, but it's not. It's This is a degenerate case. It's basically just a linked list. And so in this case, you get no speed improvement at all. And we just wasted a bunch of memory on extra pointers. And that's something that you need to keep in mind when working with binary search trees is that they're only fast if the tree is fairly balanced. So when we're working with just a regular ordinary binary search tree, the order in which we insert our numbers matters a lot. And that can be really annoying, especially if the data that we wanna store is already sort of almost sorted, then we're gonna get really bad trees. And so in order to deal with this problem, we do have other variants of binary search trees. These include AVL trees and red black trees. Please let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see a video on either of these at some point. But these trees basically automatically balance themselves as they go. So if your data happens to not be random, but it's already roughly sorted, or maybe it's perfectly sorted, it, they're still gonna work. Of course, if your data is perfectly sorted and it's static, then just use an array and use binary search there, which is very similar. And maybe we'll do a future video on that. So let me know which of these topics you'd like to see more about in future videos, but I hope this helps you understand what a binary search tree is and how you could use it in your projects. Like this video if it was helpful, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Source code's available through Patreon and I'll see you in the next video.